Hello viewers, in today's video we are going to see about the vestibular spinal tract. As I told you already, there are five very important tracts in the extrapyramidal system. The rubrospinal, the vestibulospinal, the olivospinal, the tectospinal and the reticulospinal. Okay, so the tectospinal is most often not discussed much. So the remaining four tracts what we are going to see in this consecutive videos. Today's vestibulospinal tract is a very important tract because it is concerned with balance. So as usual we have seven points to uh, describe in this tract and let's go into the tract. So where is the nucleus? So typically the nucleus of uh, the vestibulospinal tract is in the uh, vestibular nucleus complex. Why we say this as a vestibular nucleus complex means there are four nucleus clubbed together to form the nucleus. That is the superior, the inferior, the lateral and the medial. These four nucleuses are there. So from here only the vestibular spinal tract arises. So next question is from where they receive the input. This vestibular spinal tract is very essential for maintaining the balance. So when I say balance, obviously you should have this tract receiving information from the cerebellum. So this receives information from the same side cerebellum. And that information is an excitatory information that is and it influences the cerebellar influences excites the discharge of the vestibulospinal tract whatever function the vestibulospinal tract is doing the cerebellum is going to facilitate that okay so apart from the cerebellum what else is influencing the uh, vestibulospinal uh, tract it gets information from the uh, macula and cristae so what are these macula and crista so these are two sensory organs which are located in the inner ear which gives information through the vestibular nerve. You have the vestibular cochlear nerve in that the cochlear aspect is for the hearing and the vestibular aspect is for uh, sending information about how the head is in relationship to the body and how the head and body is in relationship to the environment. So the angular and linear motion of the human body when I say angular motion that means I measure it with degree so neck flexion extension rotation lateral flexion all these things are angular motion okay and linear motion is what uh, when I sit into a vehicle I travel linearly when I stand in a lift I travel up and down okay when I stand on a rotating chair I rotate down around so all these things are linear movement Fine. So uh, the inner ear senses this linear movement and angular movement and sends that particular information again to the vestibular nucleus complex. Fine. And uh, what is the nucleus that is involved here in cerebellum? It is called as the fastigial nucleus. Fastigial nucleus. This is the one that sends information to the vestibular nucleus complex. The second question is also answered. So where does the crossing over takes place? Next question. Because of the ipsilateral presentation, this tract do not cross us to the opposite side. It just remains on the same side. It, it, it re remains on the same side. How it goes? The tract comes from the medial and the lateral nucleus. There are two nucleus as we said, right? So medial and the lateral nucleus are the one which forms the uh, tract and sends information down. So I told you that medial and lateral nucleuses are giving rise for the vestibulospinal tract. In that the contribution of the lateral nucleus is more. So invariably the lateral uh, vestibulospinal tract is going to be much larger than the uh, medial because the medial uh, fibers are mainly innervating the muscles of the neck and the uh, head whereas the lateral fibers of the vestibular spinal tract innervates the muscles of the trunk and the axial skeleton and also the appendicular skeleton okay so invariably this is going to be larger I think I think I have made it large so that it looks large fine so 
the next question is also answered what is that it is not going to cross over to the opposite side it is going to represent the same side okay and uh, where does this end is the next question so it goes down and gets end into the anterior horn cells you have both alpha motor neuron and the gamma motor neurons in the anterior horn cells this is where this uh, vestibulospinal tract is going to end invariably this alpha motor neuron sends information to the muscle fibers of the extensors of the human body and the gamma motor neuron sends information to the muscle spindles which are inside the extensor muscles of the human body okay so that is the place where it's end now our usual question of upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron is very clear there nucleus here is the where position where the upper motor neuron is located and the anterior horn cells is the place where the lower motor neuron are located okay so that is clear so this is where it ends and again one more thing the medial vestibular spinal tract ends here but the lateral vestibular spinal tract continues down it continues down and it ends uh, um, not in the cervical region of the spinal cord it ends in the thoracic and the lumbar regions of the um, spinal cord again you have alpha motor neuron and gamma motor neurons of the extensors of the trunk and the lower limb and the information is going to pass on to those particular extensor muscles alpha motor neuron communicating the extra fusal muscle fibers of the extensor muscles and the gamma motor neuron communicating with the uh, muscle spindles of the extensors of the uh, uh, trunk and the lower limb musculature so invariably what you have to understand is the medial vestibular spinal tract is supplying the head and neck so it's it comes up to the upper cervical spine but the lateral vestibular spinal tract is supplying the upper limb the trunk and the lower limb so it goes down to the cervical as well as thoracic and the lumbar region so you can understand where it ends invariably now coming to the most interesting part of it what are the influences of the vestibular spinal tract the vestibular spinal tract influences the extensors of the human body okay the anti-gravity muscles of the human body because of this purpose they sense excitatory information to the extensors of the muscle uh, whole human body and sends inhibitory information to the flexors of the human body so invariably when this uh, tract is going to be active what happens to the human body it goes for a hyper extension so in order to prevent this particular activity there is a small discharge from the red nucleus we have already seen in the previous presentation what is a red nucleus so the red nucleus influences the ipsilateral uh, vestibular spinal tract in a inhibitory manner because they are influencing the flexors of the human body whereas the vestibular nucleus is influencing the extensors of the human body so always the red nucleus sends a negative information that is an inhibitory influence on the vestibular system so that the human being does not go for a hyper extension like a military man and he stands in a normal anatomical posture like this fine so there is a connection between the red nucleus and the vestibular nucleus complex that is what we have to understand so there is also a connection between the vestibular nucleus and the muscles which are controlling your eye movements that is it is influencing the muscles of the eye movement by means of influencing uh, and ascending information upwards towards the nucleus of the third fourth and the sixth cranial nerve nuclei the oculomotor the trochlea and the abducent these are the three nerves cranial nerves which are supplying the eye muscles why there has to be a connection between the vestibular system and the eye movements because when my eye is fixed onto an object and I am rotating my head this way and that way uh, the object has to be fixed with my eyes my eye ha I have to rotate equally in opposite direction with equal velocity and equal magnitude to that of my head movement then only I can fix my eye on a 
object that too when I'm you when I'm looking into object which is moving around or when I am moving around a given object all these times this head and eye movement is going to be very important this is called as the vestibulo ocular reflex for maintaining this particular reflex the, uh, the vestibular system sends information up to the three cranial nerve nuclei that is your third fourth and the sixth cranial nerve nuclei so the influences is also done and the functions are also done next the very important thing what happens if there is a dysfunction of this particular tract dysfunction of this uh, vestibular spinal tract results in lack of balance the patient will not have a proper balance because the cerebellum sends a constant information about the proprioceptive input to the um, vestibular system so the, the proprioceptive information and the vestibular system helps in maintaining the posture the postural strategies and the postural mechanisms are interconnected by the cerebellum and the uh, vestibular spinal nucleus because the, the cerebellum mind you cannot directly influence the spinal cord it can influence the spinal cord by means of the vestibular spinal tract so in case if there is a disruption of this nucleus or the tract it results in a lack of balance significantly it can also result in some of the nystagmus which can result because of the disturbed uh, vestibular ocular reflex mechanism last but not least this can also uh, result in visual compensation or for balance in case if the patient is walking into a dark room he may find it very difficult otherwise he can compensate very well with his vision and he can walk around and once he goes into a darker space or uh, when uh, uh, these patients are suddenly um, you know, blindfolded they tend to lose their balance so my dear friends this is all about the vestibular spinal tract which is a very very important tract and uh, that's it thank you then in the next video we are coming up with the reticulospinal tract which is even more important than the vestibulospinal tract so have a nice day relax and stay strong and healthy bye